the ferocity form, the way of the Vornsker. Only high-level masters of multiple forms can achieve and control the ultimate discipline known as Form 7. This is the most difficult and demanding of all forms, but it can eventually lead to fantastic power and skill. Form 7 employs bold, direct movements, more open and kinetic than Form 5, but not so elaborate in appearance as Form 4. In addition to very advanced force-assisted jumps and movements, Form 7 tactics overwhelm opponents with seemingly unconnected staccato sequences, making the form highly unpredictable in battle. This trait makes for a much more difficult execution than the graceful, linked move sequences of Form 4. Form 7 requires the intensity of Form 5 but much greater energy since that focus is wielded more broadly. Form 7 draws upon a deeper well of emotion than even Form 5, yet masters it more fully. The outward bearing of a Form 7 practitioner is one of calm, but the inner pressure verges on explosion. Form 7 is still under development since so few can achieve the necessary mastery to advance the art. As described in the Fight Saber article and the Jedi Path, Juyo was a purely offensive technique based around staggered attack sequences executed in quick bursts, very sharp and chaotic. The jagged and seemingly random movements didn't allow for the buildup of momentum, so Juyo compensated by ramping up the speed and strength performing every single strike with absolute commitment. Combined with the strong acrobatic component, this made Form 7 one of the most physically demanding forms. As outright stated in Fight Saber, Form 7 could only be studied by high-level masters of multiple other forms, a clear indication of the extreme technical demands of Juyo. But however extreme the demands were, they paled in comparison to the mental rigors. As stated in the Jedi Path, the sequences of Form 7 could be drilled into your head through regular practice, but you will not truly be using Juyo until you allow excitement, passion, and rage to color your actions. The Jedi described practitioners as channeling their emotional turmoil into a mental forge using this passion to drive their furious strikes while keeping their emotions locked within. Lesser practitioners of the art were incapable of containing their emotions, which made Juyo a gateway to the aggression and fury of the dark side when put in the wrong hands. For this reason, after the Battle of Rusan, the Jedi Battlemaster Scarch Vonk made Juyo a restricted technique, taught only to a small number of hand-picked students. However, these very qualities made Juyo celebrated amongst the Sith, Darth Sidious going so far as to call it a Sith style. In his manifesto, The Rule of Two, Darth Bane described the Juyo mindset as follows. Juyo is based on quick strikes and unpredictable attacks but you are not fully embracing the style unless your emotions ignite your senses and elevate your abilities. But do not succumb completely to your emotions. You are a Sith Lord, not an animal. As you take aim and fight through the tunnel of rage, you will experience transcendence. In that moment, you are the perfect being and you cannot be beaten. You are at last embraced within Juyo. Juyo's total focus on offense made it a devastating form of attack, capable of overpowering even the defenses of a Sarisu master. However, this emphasis came at the total expense of defensive technique, leaving Juyo practitioners vulnerable to counterattacks, particularly against multiple opponents who could exploit a moment's vulnerability and against force abilities as the total release into the force undermined a Juyo stylist's ability to defend against it. During the decades preceding the Clone Wars, Mace Windu created the Vapad style, 
which he considered to be the completed version of Form 7. Distinct from Juyo, though unmistakably related, Vapad refined many of the technical aspects and core concepts, and did possess its own unique maneuvers, which allowed Windu to identify Quinlan Voss's unknowing use of the variant. Addressing the practical technique, Vapad solved the two main weaknesses of Form 7, and it has been used to great success, both for defensive purposes and on the battlefield against large groups of opponents. But the main differences were in the mental aspect. Windu described the nature of Vapad in a private message that he sent to his fellow High Council Masters, Kiadi Mundi and Egan Kolar. I developed Vapad to answer my own weakness and channel my inner darkness into a weapon of the light. To use Vapad, a Jedi must give himself over to the thrill of battle, enjoying the fight and the satisfaction of winning. A Jedi must also accept and embrace the fury of his opponent. This transforms a Jedi into half of a superconducting loop, the other half being the power of darkness, which passes in and out of the Jedi without touching him. Vapad is more than a fighting style. It is a state of mind, a path that leads through the penumbra of the dark side. The example stance presented in the Essential Guide to the Force was the Vapad opening stance, Blade held high, broadside out, body half twisted, with the offhand extended down and across, it was clearly an attack position. This stance was one of the three Form 7 drill positions presented in the Jedi Path. The other two were Sarisu stances that looked to have been carried over to Juyo, the first being the Form 3 opener, and the other being the Form 3 brace ready stance. The example stance presented in Star Wars lightsabers was a high guard position, feet widely spaced, facing the opponent square on, blade held above the head in both hands, angled across, broadside facing out. As described in Shatterpoint, the Vapad ready stance was an attack sequence, a constant near invisible weave of lethal energy, the slashes flowing from one to the next with liquid precision. The live combat maneuvers of Form 7 were detailed in the Jedi Academy training manual. Specific attacks included the Assured Strike for Juyo, a precision attack where power was traded for accuracy, virtually guaranteeing a hit, and the Swift Flank for Vapad, where the duelist leaps or dashes around the opponent, striking their exposed side before they have a chance to react. Just to clarify, I am not suggesting that either Luke Skywalker or Ahsoka Tano are Form 7 practitioners. I am merely using these clips as analogs. More general techniques are the Bornsker's Ferocity for Juyo and the Tempered Aggression for Vapad. Both are heavy offensive barrages, and I would argue that they represent the default fighting modes for practitioners of either Form 7 variant. The difference is that the Bornsker's Ferocity is based on walking the thin line between the light and dark sides of the Force, suggesting a certain surrender of control, where the tempered aggression is based on maintaining strict control, preventing aggression from getting the better of you. To me, the critical difference between Juyo and Vapad is that Juyo is an exercise in internalizing power, dredging up power and emotion from within, where Vapad is an exercise in compartmentalizing it, taking the emotion and power from the enemy and rolling with it. Darth Treya's commentary on Form 7 was as follows. Perhaps one of the greatest styles, learned only by the most skilled of Force wielders. Impressive. In many ways, some have described it as a surrender to the Force and to chaos to strike at an opponent with such speed and angles of attack that they have difficulty countering it. Your number of attacks will increase, and you will notice many more of them shall slip beneath an opponent's guard, critically wounding them. But in surrendering yourself to the force in such a way reduces your ability to resist its effects should the enemy turn the force against you. Be on your guard. My favorite aspect of Form 7 lightsaber combat is that no two applications of the form are ever alike, 
as the need to master multiple other fighting styles as a prerequisite means that the various applications of Juyo are going to be colored by the practitioner's background study. For this reason, I would argue that the weaknesses typically attributed to Juyo depend heavily on the practitioner in question. Rom Koda's character sheet in the Force Unleashed campaign guide credited him as a Juyo practitioner, and the TFU novelization describes his personal fighting style. Suddenly Koda was moving, charging with astonishing speed behind a furious diversity of strokes. The apprentice retreated with lips pulled back over his teeth. This is more like it. Green and red energies clashed as he blocked blow after blow, and still Koda kept coming, attempting to overwhelm him with sheer determination and speed. The apprentice went back four steps, then stopped. He drew his blade close around him, forming a tight defense in deliberate imitation of the Sarisu style that Obi-Wan Kenobi had favored. Realizing he couldn't penetrate it, Koda backed off and tried a different style, slow, deliberate, with sudden and devastatingly quick strikes. These two, the apprentice parried, and when the old man's guard looked to be slipping, he offered strikes of his own. While clearly a competent and skilled duelist, Koda's relative ineffectiveness against the apprentice Galen Merrick marked him as an intermediate practitioner of Juyo. A true master-level demonstration is provided by Darth Maul during the Duel of Fates, as described in the Fight Saber article, and I quote, By the time of the Battle of Naboo, Darth Maul is the product of many years of intense training in physical combat skills, and considers himself a master of a corrupt Sith version of Form 7. Maul's utter devotion to Form 7's physical focus is telling. He remains silent during his battle with the Jedi on Tatooine and Naboo, desiring a purely physical victory instead of pursuing the higher Sith tradition of Dun Mok, domination of his opponent's spirit, which Sith typically achieve through taunts that expose inner doubts and weaknesses. Qui-Gon Jinn's assessment of Maul was as follows. Darth Maul was a warrior in his prime, never to be any better, his powers at their apex. In addition, he was driven by his messianic hatred for and disdain of the Jedi Knights, the enemies of the Sith for millennia. He had worked and trained all his life for this moment, for a chance to meet a Jedi Knight in combat. It was an added bonus that he was able to engage too. He had no fear for himself, no doubt that he would win. He was focused in a way that Qui-Gon recognized at once, a Jedi's focus mindful of the present, locked in on what was needed in the here and now. Qui-Gon saw it in his mad eyes and in the set of his red and black tattooed features. The Sith Lord was a living example of what the Jedi Master was always telling Obi-Wan about how best to hear the will of the Force. But as potent as Darth Maul was, I don't think anyone is going to question Mace Windu's supremacy over him. As the creator of Vopad, Mace Windu was his era's reigning master of Form 7, and all prospective trainees had to be vetted by him. The StarWars.com rewrite of the Fight Saber article cites Mace Windu's defeat of Jango Fett as a relentless display of Form 7. However, the definitive application of Vopad was Windu's battle with Darth Sidious, as described in the Revenge of the Sith novelization. The sample I am reading is slightly abridged. Mace was deep in it now, submerged in Vopad, swallowed by it. He no longer truly existed as an independent being. Vopad is a channel for darkness, and that darkness flowed both ways. He accepted the furious speed of the Sith Lord, drew the shadow's rage and power into his inmost center, and let it fountain out again. He reflected the fury upon its source as a lightsaber redirects a blaster bolt. He was not afraid. The darkness had no power over him. But neither did he have power over it. Vopad made him an open channel, half of a superconducting loop completed by the shadow, 
They became a standing wave of battle that expanded into every cubic centimeter of the Chancellor's office. There was no scrap of carpet nor shred of chair that might not at any second disintegrate in flares of red or purple. Lampstands became brief shields sliced into segments that whirled through the air. Couches became terrain to be climbed for advantage or overlapped in retreat. But there was still only the cycle of power, the endless loop, no wounds taken on either side, not even the possibility of fatigue. Impasse. Which might have gone on forever if Vopad were Mace's only gift. Given how the specifics of Form 7 technique are so heavily defined by the pre-existing skill sets of its practitioners, I see its compatibility with alternative weapons as varying. However, we have seen the form applied with various weapon types. Darth Maul is easily the most prominent and notable wielder of the Saber Staff, and given the nature of his application as well as Juyo itself, it was clearly an asset. Double-bladed lightsabers are very potent offensive weapons, which makes them a natural fit for Form 7. Even the restricted moveset played to the form's advantage, as the exaggerated full-body spins and torques required to maneuver the weapon forced the wielder to commit absolutely to every maneuver, reinforcing the physical technique of Form 7. Dual sabers provided similar benefits, though they fed into the elaborate and chaotic attack sequences, being based around dexterity rather than raw physicality. This was demonstrated when Darth Maul and Darth Sidious employed dual saber variants of Juyo against one another. The Fight Saber article cites the Duel of Fates as a notable demonstration of Form 7 in the hands of Darth Maul, though I argue that his skills in Nyman also feature prominently. His takedown of Qui-Gon Jinn especially is a perfect example of what can be expected from a Juyo stylist. Staggered attack patterns, uncompromising aggression, and a bizarre combination of animal savagery and calculating precision. He didn't overwhelm Jin's defenses. He surgically dissected them. Darth Sidious is a confirmed master of all seven forms of lightsaber combat, and though not a confirmed Juyo specialist, he is widely accepted as one and is the most heavily featured Form 7 master in Star Wars media, appearing in five out of the six films, in various episodes of TCW, and throughout the expanded universe. For obvious reasons, I consider Mace Windu to be more notable. The creator of Vopad appears in all three entries of the prequel trilogy, in TCW, and throughout the expanded universe.